those red five-digit ID numbers or the section number, um, that's what we need to help a student. And you probably had that experience in your own schedule, right? So literally in the computer system, like I have to know which section of the class. So that's just kind of a good fundamental thing when you're helping a student or sending them up to us or if you're coming on behalf of them, um, have a specific section of the class handy. It's just, otherwise you have to go back and get it, it's just kind of a headache. Basic stuff. Um, the other thing is we do in the School of Business split our sections and, and so one thing as a student advisor that you got to get comfortable with, maybe more so than when you're dealing with your own personal scheduling in your classes, is reading in kind of detail on what the class, um, if there's reserved seats or if there are requirements. Um, an example might be, actually I'm going to show you a different example. Um, But I've been getting a ton of emails about this class called Business Communications, which Upper Division students take. And you'll see, like, see, there's three seats here in this one, right? We in the cursor. But notice this one is reserved for econ majors. And so I have many, many students asking, why can't I get into this class? I mean, you know, you told me to take this class. Well, that's the, the, the econ major section. If you notice section three and four here, they're the exact same class. It's the same time, same room, same teacher. So we will like prorate or mix uh, or uh, pull out a certain amount of seats for different populations of students sometimes. Um, and we do do that in lower division with some of the classes, primarily accounting and IT and business. And once again, you don't have to remember this because I'm sure some of you will, you know, a couple weeks from now, I'm trying to register a student. Like, why can't they get into this class that was recommended? Then I'll tell you, oh, I heard it for now. Not going to get any more, like, human nature. You got final still, it'll happen before that, so no worries. But like, IT and business is a like, required free major. See how we split the section? Every other one is actually the exact same class, but the smaller 18 seat, um, that's just reserved for information systems management majors because they have to take that class for their major, so we agreed that we'll get more reserved some seats for them. Um, but if you notice the room number, it's this room number, right? It's 136 people, that's the capacity here. So we just split kind of prorate the amount of students. So just get comfortable kind of reading a little bit more in detail, and then you guys probably, I'm sure they want to reserve a seat in the board where it says, that's for our students that we're going to be helping, so they should have access to those because that's new students transfer or Have you guys covered that? MS 13. So, questions on that so far? Um, so, looking at our manual, and I, I, I put a lot of information, I'm flipping over here to the Moodle thing, the LSB advisor manual. Um, I put a lot of things in here intended for like reference. Going back to the comment I made earlier, do not intend you to memorize a bunch of facts and details necessarily. Um, those of you who have advised for LSD before, I go over for 20 minutes our degree requirements and what we're going to do that day for the new students. So all you got to do is listen to me during that 20 minute half hour thing and I will explain like what we're going to do this afternoon, which groups go where or when. Um, so you will you will have a good sense of that. But I'm going to go over this right now anyway, so if you have questions you can ask, but this is kind of... Um, so this daily schedule, I will have a copy for each of you, and it's just sort of a, a glance like what the schedule um, looks like. So over here will be your name on one of these groups. You'll just have one group, of course, so it'll be you know, your name here. And then there'll be you know, four or five new students, um, you know, whatever their names are, obviously. Um, and then over on the other side will be the faculty advisor for that group. Does that make sense? And there's little placards on the tables. We're in a new room this year, back there, so I'm not exactly sure I'm going to set it up. Um, but there'll be a little placard, it'll just be LSD group one, group two, you know, obvious. Um, and so you just have your group and, and just have a seat at your table. Um, you'll probably arrive before the students, but just have a seat at your table, and, and that's the daily schedule. Um, one thing about this is that we do groups one through six will get advised and register first, and groups seven through 12, the second half, they will go get their U card and do like a mini tour. The mini tour thing is just kind of the buy time, basically, because I only have six faculty advisors, so they do, the first hour they do a group, and then the second hour they do a group. Does that make sense? So, if you're, and I'll say this at the beginning of each session, so you don't know, but if you're a group, and you're group 7 through 12, I'll be like, okay, you guys go get your U card, and your student advisor will show you, like, where our office is, which is right outside the hall here, so it's convenient for an hour. We minimally, the tour is just get your U card, and if you have time, show them where the advising office for LSB is. And then as you're walking back and forth, just point out relevant things that you know just from being a student here. It's not like an that makes sense? And probably should you call it that. But it's just kind of a buy time, because otherwise you're going to be back and you're just sitting you know, for an hour waiting for your time to get back to where you're going. So, does that make sense? So it's just getting you card and showing more our offices. But if you're looking at your clock going, oh, I've got like 40 minutes for the faculty advisor to be ready. Don't feel free to just show them around campus. You've got four or five students. You know, show them whatever you think is open up. Um, pretty, pretty unstructured. So, two
tour is what I call it, but it's not like an admission tour. So. Um, and then I did put on here in yellow, and you'll have one of these each day, remember. Um, just try to be back at like 10.20 or 2.50, whether it's a morning or afternoon session, just so we can keep rolling. So the faculty advisor can take their second group, um, just so we can keep, keep on track. Um, and then I have this, again, you don't have to memorize this. This is just a written sketch of what we do. Um, so you do not need to know this. So what I do starting, I don't know why this is, this should be on one page now. So what I do is from um, 9.30, here, I better look at here, from 2 to 2.10, uh, that's wrong, I'm sorry. Oh no, so up here, where is that? Oh, I see, I see, it's what, what I'm doing first. Page. This is, I'm sorry, this is a page break on my version. So 1.30 to 2, or 9 to 9 30 depending on if it's morning or afternoon i spend a half hour going over our day in our degree requirements so that's where if you just listen during that and you do osb in a month you'll remember all this and so what i go over are appendix a b and c that's why you don't have to memorize anything a b and c i go over this but i go over our degree requirements which is getting into upper division status which is lsb and fc is kind of the main thing we have gta requirements and um, 12 classes that um, Um, so Appendix A, I go over in front of the group and I talk through this. This is like how our three major requirements and our and the LibEd uh, program kind of fit together. And this is for all of our majors. So one nice thing about LSV is whether you're finance, economics, marketing, healthcare management, it's the same uh, first half of the degree, and that's primarily all you're going to have to know. So you don't have to know all the different majors. And I go over that, um, and then I just talk to them about the daily schedule um, and. Appendix C is just a worksheet like all of the different colleges have where they can just write down what their courses are um, that the faculty member recommends and then just the time grid for them to build the, the time schedule on the bottom. So it's going to be pretty, pretty similar to all the other units at the other colleges that go. So for a half hour, just go over our degree requirements and you're just kind of sitting there with your group listening and you go over the day and go over our degree requirements. So you hear the same thing every time and you feel like, oh yeah, okay, now I know how to help the student and advise them. So I talk about the pre-major requirements and then Generals and how that fits in with LSB. The same for all majors. So I'm not going to get into that today because you'll hear it a lot. And then the way it works is faculty um, come over to your table and they may spend some time at the small table, like five or ten minutes, or they may just start with their first student. Different faculty like to do it differently. If they spend time at the small group table, they'll talk about things like maybe their research interests or the value of study abroad or how their discipline, like economics, might fit in with the overall business degree because like marketing students are like, why don't they pick econ? Sometimes they talk about that kind of stuff. Um, but primarily then, they'll just meet one-on-one -on -one with their individual students. Each student from your group will go and spend 10 minutes or so with the faculty advisor. And they will recommend for them various courses you know, in discussion with them. Um, and that's what they will come back with this sheet up on the top, filled in, and I try to use like a cursive kind of font, because that will be playing when the student will fill in what the faculty advisor is recommending. And they'll come back with that. That's kind of the worksheet you'll work off of. Um, so as each student come back, comes back, of course, you're helping them register. Um, and then after all the students are registered, you go get the new card and just show them our offices. Um, obviously, you do that in reverse order if you're group 7 through 12. Um, pretty straightforward. What I put in here, though, too, is talking points are just kind of, you, you can, you guys are all you know, competent students. And so if you want, but these are some, some content points to discuss. Obviously, introducing yourself, kind of where you're coming from, and encourage them to introduce themselves to each other. So when you're sitting with your small group, this is just kind of some content for you to talk about. You can use these ideas, obviously, with any of the colleges. Um, you know, why you like your major and minor, what your major and minor is, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, the green or yellow degree worksheets, what that is, is Appendix B, which I will hand out each session, um, and I will explain that in detail. It's just a degree outline. Um, all your major has to know every major year. It's just a degree outline. I'll explain what that is. Um, back to here. So, the UOD catalog and liberal education course list, I know you know where that is. Um, you know, answer questions, but emphasize that the faculty, you know, makes the kind of the decision. And then just teach them how to use the registration material, you know, how to read prerequisites. I'm sure they've gone over this with the, um, Travis um, and, and kind of students and transition staff, so I won't bore you with that. But um, what faculty advisors are doing is talking with them about. You know, math is, is kind of a main thing of business. Um, and then what the student is interested in, hopefully, because um, we want to have this be an individual experience.
experience and not have to kind of rise in the factory. And then additional topics, these are just some talking points on that. Don't think of this as like, oh, I gotta cover all this. You may not cover any of this. You may not want to cover this. I don't want to talk about that. But these are just some ideas to kind of keep the conversation flowing, things to talk about with your small group. Because the thing I always hate is when I had a group of four students and a student advisor, and I'm just kind of sitting there in silence, going, right? is the fact that the advisor are ready? And I'm like, well, they're still working with their last group, and then you're just sitting there kind of staring at each other like a junior high dance. You know? So <laughs> that's what we're trying to avoid. I want you to be like facilitating conversation. Um, so these are just some things you can talk about, or things you could, you know, get them talking to each other. Is the idea. So that's kind of what this stuff is all about. Um, tutoring center is a good one. Time management. You know, just the stuff you know about being a successful college student. Um, students come in not really knowing what to expect, but they need to make it. So just to recap, I want to talk about the just re revisit the, the main things um, that I that mentioned in the beginning, which is that you don't have to know like all these details. Just know where to look them up and be comfortable asking. And be comfortable saying, you know, I'm not sure, I want to make sure I get the right answer. I think I know, but let me just check. Be comfortable doing that. And then just give, try to get a pulse of your group. If there's a student you might have a concern about, you know, just try to let us know. Or, or just even, you know, maybe ask them, you know, how they're doing or, you know, kind of dry out as much as you feel comfortable. Um, that's kind of the, the main thing. You know, I, I can't memorize all these details. I just got to know where to look things up a lot of times. And, and that's, don't feel that pressure. I think sometimes with these trainings,
We need two people.
all of those dream classes will go up to what to
progressing between chemistry and oceanography. Why do you go to say me? And she's got to take the U card. Smile! And then have you sit back down. Like, do you see what I'm saying? We kind of need things to be a little more, like you should drink Red Bull in the morning. Or not you. I don't judge. Um, because, because of this, we now have this through you card, and we have to get them through. I'm working on some other things behind the scenes, you know, right now that's a problem. And so when you're doing that piece of advising, and you're like, okay, I have to do this fast, but oh my god, calm down. We have an extra staff on every day. They will be the ones pull. What are you doing right now? I said, oh, no problems. Uh, you're not doing this right now. You're gonna wait for packing advice. You card or mini tour, but probably just you card. <laughs> Um, so this is Monday morning, May 20th. Uh, 
Um, as you can see, we have two collegiate units, and then at the bottom we have extra staff that are here at the same time as everyone else who's advising. If you are one of the nine, six to nine extra staff members, you'll do exactly what Jen just said. You'll either be advising if we need more advisors, or you will be, is that too small? I can make it bigger. Uh, or you will be doing new card, or sitting there eating the sandwiches, whatever Jen has you doing. Yeah. <laughs> I love you, Jen. Um, um, so, uh, greeters. One thing that has changed uh, from the last one you saw, greeters in the hallway monitor. You're here at 7.30 in the morning or noon for the afternoon session. So you're here an extra half hour uh, because there are those very eager science folks who are here early every morning. Um, and yeah, you're getting paid for an extra half hour. Uh, I'll go over the each job again. So Breeders Hall are uh, outside the library. Um, Take a lot of people through the first phase. They'll see as they come in. Uh, all the monitors, we don't know where you'll be standing yet. It will be outside the load of a bookstore or outside the coffee shop. Depends on where the Kirby construction confuses the shit out of people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once we know, they don't even know yet. Yeah, May 20th, by the way, May 20th is working, May 20th probably. Yeah, you're going to be the guinea pig day. Yay! So that's the day we'll discover where those people go. Um, and then Pied Pipers are here, ready to check in, and they're helping bring uh, some of the police unit welcomes are in Montague, they'll help bring parents and families down there. And then you can see 1130. Yeah, uh, those two of you are bringing students back up to um, Raptors. the Raptors Ball and Road Advising is. And the parents will stay at the parent panel, and there's a the parent panel, and then there's checkout, and the advising, and the extra stuff, and then. We do it again. Now we do it all over again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do we go to like that spot or do we like come check in somewhere? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Check in. And... Yep. So it'll be in the ballroom, just like it always been in past years. Go. It'll be outside the ballroom. Outside the ballroom. That's where you come, you check in for your shift. Jen will be there. If it's in the morning, I'll we'll be there. If it's in the afternoon, I'll probably still be there. And Justin will be there. Um, you'll come check in for your shift. You'll highlight your name. You'll see this exact spreadsheet printed out. That's a good question, actually. Uh, you'll highlight your name, which tells me that you're here. You grab your name tag, and then you'll look to see where you're going, or one of us will tell you where to go. Um, and then the fun begins for you. Um, and one thing to note between 12 and 12.30, 12 uh, if you are working the morning shift, that is your lunch break. If it says that you're greeting for the afternoon shift at 12, email me. I forgot that until 20 minutes ago, so I haven't really looked through the afternoon session. Um, otherwise, if, if you had a contention, if you had stuff that I messed up in the first one, I should have fixed it. Hopefully. Um, um, that's important. This is important. You guys can't work more than it. Yeah, Trust yeah. me, I want to work you until you cry and your fingers bleed, but there's a law that says I can. Because you must. Yep. You cannot go, but I really want to sacrifice myself. Because that means you have to go into jail. So, so go. Okay, like, love me out of jail. Eat lunch. Okay. Um, I totally was going to say. Sorry. Uh, so we're not providing lunch this year like last year, so. We were providing lunch last year. What lunch buddies? What? It, oh, if you're yeah, a lunch buddy. We've done that in a year. But, uh, that was right in the eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, yeah. TSS, uh, as you can see, I have notes right there. <laughs> if you're highlighted in yellow, it means you're more than likely advising. If you're not highlighted, then you'll either be floating or advising or assisting with whatever we need to. Um, so that's what it means for TSS. Um, in the afternoons, we have extra staff here to I'll show you until I'm almost done, I promise. Uh, extra staff is here until 5.30. Uh, so we need people to uh, help clean up tables and put things away because Justin and Jen can't do it all by themselves. It might not be until 5.30 every day, but that's just kind of a buffer um, for us. So, and if it says your name and then at something, it means that's what time you're at. And if it says like a minus, it means that's what time you leave. 
I don't think it applies to many people. So um, when you guys are coming for your shift, come like eight and a half minutes early. I'd say 15, but I'm not sure I can afford it. So right in there, be a little, a little less than 10 minutes early. Go to, so check in is in front of the ballroom for both collegiate units. This is not to scale. The garden room is not bigger than the ballroom. <laughs> um, here's where the students do their check-in. You guys come to the staff table in front of the Raptors. Check in with me, you'll sign your time sheets. It'll be a lovely moment. If there's a panic, you'll all have my cell phone number because there is no freaking phone up there. So you'll be able to call and text me, Justin, and um, Travis. I always call you guys Dustin. That's not anyone's name other than my last one. So um, we'll have our cell phone number so that you can get a hold of us if there's a problem. We, if you get sick, please don't come. But it's really important that you tell us as soon as you know. Okay? Um, so you'll check in here. Um, if SFA is not on, please gather in the garden room because having 55 staff members here while you're waiting to do things is no way. Not. Well, if you don't use the Facebook, no problem. Yeah, we don't use Facebook. Well, that's you won't find me. 